In 2021, Nicole Hannah-Jones was going to make history. Two years after launching the 1619 Project at the New York Times, where she placed the contributions of black Americans at the center of this country's history, and one year after she won the Pulitzer Prize for her work, the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill announced that it was hiring Nicole Hannah-Jones. She was going to be the first black scholar appointed to be a so-called night chair. Now, historically, that position comes with tenure, but not for Hannah Jones. When right-wing opponents and a top donor at the university, the man that UNC's School of Journalism is named after, objected to Hannah Jones's appointment, her tenure was blocked. It took mass protests for the university to decide to grant her tenure, but by that time, she had chosen instead to join the faculty of Howard University, one of the country's top historically black colleges and universities. This week, Hannah Jones is reminding people of what happened to her, because it looks a lot like what happened to now former Harvard president Claudine Gay. Joining me now is Nicole Hannah Jones, Pulitzer Prize winning reporter at the New York Times Magazine, creator of the 1619 Project and the Knight Chair in Race and Journalism at Howard University. Uh, as you point out, Nicole, we, we never meet on good occasions. That's right. uh, but this one's important for people to understand because a lot of Americans have been hoodwinked. They think uh, Claudine Gay is out. Uh, because she said something anti-Semitic, which she didn't. They think Claudine Gay is out because she plagiarized. Uh, she had some inconsistencies in her citations, uh, which she reviewed and asked for corrections to, and Harvard determined that that was not, uh, that, that the proper uh, steps were taken. She's out because they came for her. She's out because a very organized group of people, very similar to the people who came for you, came for her. Yes, absolutely. You know, one, let me just say, um, my heart is really with uh, Dr. Gay. Um, this is a woman who had a stellar academic career and has had her reputation sullied strictly for political reasons. I know yes, exactly you know what, that looks what that's like. like. Um, this is not about plagiarism. This is not about anti-Semitism. This is about, um, as you said, an extremely well-organized propaganda campaign from the right um, to make anyone black in a high position of power seem like a, a diversity hire, a, an unqualified affirmative action hire. This is the next iteration of the anti-critical race theory campaign that led to the banning of books and curricula that's now trying to target people of color in leadership positions and um, do a great deal of damage to the racial progress that has been made. And in fact, it's it's the same people, the, the same guy, Chris Rufo, who popularized uh, CRT incorrectly, who also had Donald Trump uh, write, you know, edicts about what it should be. The same people who wanted to get 1619 out of the vernacular and started the hashtag 1776. It's the same thing. It's this movement that says some of you have come too far and we're, we're, we're taking it back now. Absolutely. I mean, just look at the language that's being used. So one, as we were discussing, um, Chris Rufo is not even trying to camouflage what he's Correct. doing. Correct. He, he puts it all out on social lays media. lays the playbook yeah. out. He says, this is what we're going to do. And then he does it. Um, what is disheartening is how he's able to lay out the playbook and be so successful. What happened with Claudine Gay? Anyone who's ever written a long form paper mm -hmm. with, that goes through multiple revisions knows that you can make citation errors. Yep. Um, you've rewritten the same sentence 12 times and eventually the quotations fall off or sometimes you don't cite it in the right place. Even her... It happens commonly. It happens all the time, yeah. um, which we've seen. It happens yes. even with some of the people who have made the accusations yes. um, or who are related to some of the people who've made the accusations to Dr. Gay. But we're in a landscape now where because this is about politics and not really concerns about plagiarism, that you can't make mistakes. You right. cannot make an error. And especially and as a black woman. Issue. That's the bigger issue because there are black women who enjoy positions of authority in this country in a way that hasn't been done historically right. because we as a society realized that that was an important thing to do who are now, they got targets on them. That's right. Every black woman in a position of authority in this country, they're gonna wonder, did you, did you really get that job properly or, or were you a diversity hire or did you get a leg up because you're black? Yes, and this is this is what I say. This is, this is how it is impossible for black women to win um, um, 
in this moment that we're in. Because if you're not successful, then they say you were lazy, you didn't work hard enough. Um, if you are successful, they say that you didn't deserve it. And they will put you under a, a level of scrutiny that frankly, none of us would be able to withstand. I know what that feels like. Um, if you go through every single word, if you parse every single, you know, where's the comma, where are the quotation marks? I don't think anyone's work with, with stand up to that scrutiny. Um, but we also, therefore, give grace and say, okay, you made an error. This you is how you correct, correct that it. Error. All the universities That's have a right. system for that, that you find, you ask for a review, you get the review. But here's something interesting. So, so this happens now to Bill Ackman's wife. Yes. Bill Ackman's been on a campaign. His wife gets found to have done some stuff. It's actually more egregious than, than what uh, anything Claudine Gay was accused of doing. That said, he said, she's a human, she makes mistakes, yes. which I think is a reasonable answer. And I think we should give Bill Ackman's wife the grace of the fact that she's a human who made a mistake. But because this has been dug up, now he's saying we're coming for all of you. He's he's going to he's got money, so he's going to fund uh, a review of every academic at MIT's uh, research. This didn't happen before there were women and people of color in power. People could just get away with whatever they could get away with. We weren't really in a meritocracy because a whole bunch of people were left out of that discussion. Absolutely. I mean, what we're seeing is what we know has always been the case. White men get the benefit of the doubt. They get the presumption that they are qualified, that they are the most qualified. A person of color, and particularly a woman of color, particularly a black woman, the presumption is that she is not, and that she is uh, deserving of this extra scrutiny because she shouldn't be in that position. Let me tell you, in, in the 380 years that Harvard has existed, um, Claudine Gay is not the first black woman because she was the first black woman who was qualified. Mm -hmm. She was the first black woman who had an equal chance to actually mm -hmm. um, uh, be put into that position. And now she has the shortest tenure of anyone in that position. That is not about Claudine Gay and her qualifications. That is about a society that is unprepared to see a black woman at, at kind of the citadel of American uh, academic power. So the, we've been talking about this all week. The reason I wanted to talk to you is because I've always admired your personal courage in this. You have come under attack on social media, in public, from the president of the United States, from Christopher Rufo, from these same powers, and you're not giving up. You, you don't stop. You created a new reality for yourself. So what's your inspirational message right now? Because for a lot of people in America, they're scared tonight mm. that, that the Ackmans and the Rufos of the world will come for them too. Well, I, re I really have two things to say. Um, I had an institution that supported me no matter what the attacks were, and that means a lot. Um, originally, Harvard supported Claudine Gay, then they didn't. Institutions are going to have to uh, show some courage in these moments, because what you do when you fold in face of this is then you only uh, encourage more of it to happen. Yes. They're going to say, oh, we, as they did, you we did. got her scalp. Yeah. So now we're One going to down, come for more down. people. One down, two down. That's what they, they were tweeting. Right. So institutions like Harvard, you have power. Use your power. Don't sell out this woman or sell out others when you know that these are political attacks. And the other thing I'll say is uh, we come from folks who have always had to fight. I understand um, that being in this positions that I'm in, are uh, it's a tremendous privilege. I'm going to keep fighting. And all of us, if, if we band together against this, we will win because we're right, because we have ethics, we have morals, we have scruples, we have humanity. Um, so we just, we cannot give up in this moment and we can't be weak. Thank you for everything you've done, Nicole. Good to see you as always. Thank you always. Nicole Hannah-Jones is the night chair in uh, race and uh, journalism at Howard University.